Welcome everyone. And thank you, Dorothy and Dan for the beautiful prelude. So this is our Faith and Democracy Sunday at Cleveland Park Congregational United Church of Christ. Um, we, along with many other churches in the UCC, are focusing on faith and democracy this Sunday. And so we join together with them. We're an open and affirming congregation and whoever you are and wherever you are, you are very welcome here. We extend a special welcome to visitors and invite you to tell us who you are and where you are from. Just click on the visitor link in the chat room and I promise to send an email. Before the announcements, just a few housekeeping details. Please make sure that your devices are muted and if you don't have your video turned on or we can't see everyone who is worshiping with you, please use the chat room to tell us how many adults and how many children are viewing the service. Our deacons are keeping track. Ollie will share the announcements. Good morning, everyone. This morning after worship, the Racial Justice Group will host a coffee hour conversation about Ijeomo Oluo's book, So You Want to Talk About Race. You're welcome to participate, whether you've done the reading or not. We'll share a short video to begin. This afternoon, the poetry group will meet at 4 p.m. All poetry lovers are welcome. And this Friday evening, September 25th, the Racial Justice Group will host a watch party of American Sun on Netflix. We'll provide more details during the coffee hour conversation. Next Saturday, Sunday school families will gather in the side yard for a safely distanced community service project at 2 p.m. And on Sunday, the Bible study group will meet after work after worship, not after work, after worship, <laughs> and the Faith Life group will meet at 5.30 p.m. Email Dit Tally for details about Bible study and Dan Sack for info about Faith Life. Their email addresses are in the chat room. Thank you, Holly. We now begin our time of worship by lighting a candle of hope and healing for the world. Our service this morning will focus on the privilege of having both a voice and a vote. We will ask how are we called to speak and act at such a time as this? Please join me in our call to worship, and Holly will be the other respondent. God is here. God who loves us each without measure and welcomes us from every color, creed, and culture. God who sees and knows us all is here. Hallelujah. Let's praise God. And together we pray. Gracious and compassionate God, we seek to follow Jesus' way. We ask for your help in doing justice, loving kindness, and walking humbly in your name. We pray to live out the gospel in everything from our vocation to our vote and we aspire to create the beloved community where all are welcomed, housed, and fed, and everyone may live with dignity and peace. Amen. So please join me now for our opening hymn in honor of the life of Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. This song, Canticle of the Turning, is based on the Magnificat, or Song of Mary, in the Gospel of Luke. It's her response when the angel Gabriel tells her she's been chosen to bring Jesus into the world. And it's a powerful, prophetic pronouncement from another courageous Jewish woman who risked and sacrificed much for the people of her time. My soul cries out with a joyful shout that the God of my heart is great. And my spirit sings of the wondrous things that you bring to the ones who wait. You fixed your sight and a servant's bright, and I wait to see the next turn. So from east to west, shall I name thee? 
Ginsburg, may your memory be for a blessing. And as the Facebook meme says, may your memory be for a revolution. Rest in peace. I now invite you to join in a time of silent reflection. When we gather for worship, we heed God's call and honor our need for Sabbath and rest. When we enter into silence, we attune our hearts and open our minds to a presence greater than our own. As we begin this short period of meditation, I encourage you to bring your full self to this present moment. Set aside any distractions, lay down your burdens, and take a deep, life-giving breath. God is with us. Let us reflect upon the week that has passed. What are the joys we have celebrated? What concerns have we endured?
Are there things we have done that we ought not to have done? And are there things we have left undone that we ought to have done? As we look forward to the week ahead, what help will we need from God or neighbor And what can we do to nurture love of God and love of neighbor in the world? We'll close in prayer. Source of life, for the joys we have celebrated, we give you thanks. God of compassion, for the concerns we have endured, please tend our hearts. Spirit of justice, for those things we have misdone, transform us with your love. Companion God, as we look forward to the week ahead, be ever present with us. And great lover of all, as we seek to nurture love of God and neighbor in the world, guide our actions and our prayers. Amen. Jesus said, come to me, all you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, or in the old version, all you who travail and are heavy laden, come to me and I will give you rest. We can all rest and be assured that through the grace and love of God, we are forgiven. No matter what we have done or left undone, we are assured of forgiveness through the awesome and redemptive power of God's great mercy and love. We are loved by a God whose love is not something we can imagine. It's not even what we know as love. It's that much bigger. And now held in the arms of this God, who is both father and mother, we pray together the prayer of Jesus, our brother. Mother, father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
is now time to greet one another and share God's peace. So I invite you to unmute your devices and share the peace with one another. Peace be with you all. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Hi, Ellen Campbell. Hi, Nicholas. Peace. Hi, Nicholas. Peace. Hi, David. Peace. Hi, Jess. Hi, Jess. Hi, Is Noah there? Is Noah there? Hi, Holly. Hi, Nicole. Not yet. <laughs> Where's Noah? Where's Noah? <laughs> Teacher deserves snow. <laughs> All right. So we're going to remute now, and we'll do our peace prayer together. I invite you to place your hands over your heart. Then repeat after me. May peace and health be with me. May peace and health be with me. May peace and health be with this congregation. May peace and health be with our city and our country. May peace and health be with this world. Amen. So we have a treat this morning, another new thing. Um, the Chimes Choir has um, gotten together with their masks on and recorded a piece for us. And so I'm excited to share that. Beautiful. Dorothy, would you mind unmuting and telling us who participated in that? Uh, yeah, thanks, Ellen. Uh, the Chime Choir, of course, everyone knows that Lee Roll donated the chimes uh, on behalf of her sister. And Dan Stokes uh, led the Chime Choir and participating were John Tishy, Serena Wiltshire, um, Margaret Goodman, Latia uh, Barrett, and Ralph Jennings, and me, and I, of course, Dan. I hope I haven't left anybody out. Uh, so I that, yeah, I think that sounded like the the group. That's wonderful. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Good. Yes. And anybody who is interested in participating in music, 
we really are sort of working out how to do this. So just um, you know, email Dorothy or me and let us know that you'd be interested. Um, you can do it recording safely at the church or in the comfort of your own home, we have options. So now Kimberly, who is back with us in DC, is um, she both of her job, both her job and her school are online, but she had an apartment in DC, so she came here anyway. And um, she is doing Sunday school with um, both our kindergarten through second graders, they met this morning before worship, and with our third and fourth graders who will be meeting this afternoon at 3 p.m. And she will be doing our children's talk today. Kimberly. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Zachary. I see you. If there are any other children here, please unmute and give me a shout. Make some sort of noise because I know many do not have cameras on. But I am so happy to see you, Zachary. I haven't seen you in so long. Uh, this morning, as Pastor Ellen said, I met with the kindergarten through second grade class and I got to see Magda, Pearl, and Mabel. And we talked a lot about uh, the Genesis 1 creation story which Ellen and I were discussing works actually really well with this weekend as we are celebrating Rosh Hashanah. So Shana Tova, everybody. I celebrated with a lot of matzo ball soup yesterday. It was delicious and very salty. And I ate a bagel this morning. If anybody caught me wolfing down a bagel on camera. So I am here to say Shana Tova, Happy New Year. And with that, I was thinking that I could share like one thing that I learned as a religious studies student uh, at American University. I graduated in May with my bachelor's in religious studies. And something that I learned um, that Pastor Ellen can back me up on is that in Jewish tradition, we see sundown as marking the beginning of the day, which is why when we celebrated Rosh Hashanah this weekend, which is ending tonight at sundown, we heard the shofar, the ram's horn, get blown evening on Friday at the very beginning of Rosh Hashanah. And Rosh Hashanah will end tonight at sundown because that will mark the beginning of the next day. So the holiday will be over. So this morning with our children and youth, with our kindergarten through second grade class, while we were doing the Genesis 1 creation story, I led the children in a guided breath meditation combined with a modified sun salutation to talk about being in touch with our bodies, being in touch with the love of God and love of neighbor and what that means when we love ourselves through stretching. So because we are talking about the end of the day marking, or I guess, sunset end of day for us, marking the beginning of the day in Jewish tradition. I was thinking today with you all, I can lead you and I would love Zachary's help with this and also Holly's help, if you don't mind, in leading a modified moon salutation that we can do whenever we want to still ourselves, connect with God, and maybe before bed, get a nice stretch before the end of the day. So you're welcome to stand. I'm going to stay seated so everybody can stay right where they are. Everyone can do this if you would like to. So I'm just going to do the, oop, Holly's already standing. Holly's ready to go. I am going to stay seated, but everyone can watch Holly as well as I just lead us through the very beginning of our moon salutation where it only involves lifting our arms and moving our torsos. So before we begin, I'll have everybody put their hand to their heart as we did this morning with our peace prayer. And I'll lead us through three breaths, breathing in the love of God and breathing out the love of neighbor. I'm going to close my eyes. Breathe in love of God, breathe out love of neighbor. Breathe in love of God, breathe out love of neighbor. Breathe in love of God, Breathe out, love of neighbor. Now breathe in and lift your arms. Breathe out, stretch to your left. Breathe in, center. Breathe out, stretch to your right. Breathe in, center. Breathe out, stretch to your left. Breathe in, center. Breathe out, stretch to your right. Breathe in, center. Breathe out, stretch to your left. 
Breathe in, center. Breathe out, stretch to your right. And we'll close with a few hand on our heart prayers. Breathe in, love of God. Breathe out, love of neighbor. Breathe in, love of God. Breathe out, love of neighbor. Breathe in, love of God. Breathe out, love of neighbor. Thank you for stretching with me, doing my modified moon salutation. Thank you, Holly, for being so into it. <laughs> Love that. And Zachary, I hope to see you at three with all others who want to join. Thank you so much, Kimberly. That made me realize that, you know, one of the awesome things about the Episcopal Church is what we used to call liturgical calisthenics. You know, you're constantly like getting up and kneeling down and getting up again and sitting. <laughs> we sit too much. Thank you very much for that. That was good to move. So now, um, let's see, Callie is going to read from the book of Proverbs and the book of Isaiah in the Hebrew Bible, otherwise known as the Old Testament. Good morning. So our first reading is from Proverbs chapter 31, verses 8 through 9. Speak out for those who cannot speak, for the rights of all the destitute. Speak out, judge righteously. Defend the rights of the poor and the needy. And our second reading this morning is from Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 through 8. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temples. Seraphs were in attendance above him, each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost. For I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed, and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here I am. Send me. Thank you so much, Callie. And um, I just want to remind everyone that you are very, very welcome to sign up for scripture reading or sharing joys and concerns. Um, we love to have different people participate in the worship service. And so um, you're free to say it in the chat room right now or send me an email uh, or sign up in Sign Up Genius in the member section of the website. But if you're interested, please let us know. So after Callie's reading from um, the book of Isaiah, you may be wondering who is King Uzziah and what the heck is going on in that temple? Well, to set the historical context, Uzziah was king of the southern kingdom of Judah, the northern kingdom being Israel, in the 8th century BCE. Apparently he did all right for the first 41 years of his reign, but then, as rulers are prone to do, became arrogant and egotistical. At that point, he was struck with leprosy and spent the last 11 years of his life essentially quarantined while his son, Jotham, ruled the kingdom. It's right after Uzziah dies that Isaiah enters the story. And it's his call to prophecy to speak out for God that today's scripture reading portrays. Isaiah is, well, who knows where he is in reality, but he has this wild vision, experience, dream, hallucination, who knows, 
that he's in the temple seeing God. Now, as you may know, seeing God in the Hebrew Bible or Old Testament often results in death. Thus, Isaiah is terrified and says, woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. He expects instant death. But he doesn't die. Instead, an angel, a seraph, brings a burning coal from the high altar and touches Isaiah's lips with it, saying, now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. In other words, you've been cleansed, purified. As I said in a sermon a few weeks ago, like a flame sterilizes or purifies a needle used to stitch a wound, or like intense heat burns away the dross to reveal gold. And that's when the voice of God calls out, whom shall I send? And Isaiah replies, Hineani, here I am, send me. Well, with all the smoke and seraph and burning coal imagery, it's easy to get distracted from what's most important about this story, but it boils down to this. Yet again, God calls an imperfect, mortal, broken and beautiful human being to speak out, to prophesy. And Isaiah will continue to speak boldly for 66 chapters on behalf of God and for those who are unable to speak for themselves. Of course, it's not just prophets with visions who are called to speak out. As this morning's passage from the book of Proverbs proclaims, speak out for those who cannot speak, for the rights of all the destitute. Speak out, judge righteously, defend the rights of the poor and needy. We're all called to do this. And we each get to decide how we'll respond, whether or not, will answer, Hineni, here I am, send me. Now back in the days of Kings Uzziah and Jotham, speaking out was dangerous. In fact, it could get you killed. And this has been true in most places and times when you think about it. Speaking out has required great courage for being a prophet could cost your life. It's true today as well. I mean, in some parts of the world, and certainly with some colors of skin, speaking out is a death sentence. In fact, keeping your mouth closed and your eyes down is often the only way to stay alive. I know this, and am thus in awe of those in such situations who do speak out and look up. Here I am. I bow to such courage. But you know, tough as things are in our country right now, most of us, certainly most of us here this morning, aren't in that situation. We still have the right to speak, vote, challenge, write, resist, and protest, and I'd argue we have the duty. I'd claim it's our responsibility and our call. I get it. You haven't had a vision of God in the temple with six winged seraphs bringing burning coals to your lips, which by the way, could be a good thing. But this doesn't mean God hasn't called you. It doesn't mean you haven't been asked to respond. I believe that the immense privilege of having been born into a situation in which we're able to vote, able to speak out, able to protest, is a call to respond. The passage from the book of Proverbs claims we are called to speak out for those who cannot speak. And there are so many, both within and without our borders, for whom this is true. So many voices have been silenced. The same passage says we are called to defend the rights of the poor and needy. 
And in our country, voting for policies that create more just and accessible housing, education, health care, and employment is one of the most effective ways to do this. Jesus teaches that we are in both word and deed meant to challenge the status quo and seek justice always for the least of these. This is our call. Every Christian denomination, including ours, the United Church of Christ, or UCC, grew out of a particular historical context and set of challenges that gave rise to its theology and polity. In our case, the congregational strand of our UCC heritage began with the Puritans who fled to this land seeking freedom from oppression by the British church and monarchy. It's from them we gained the very important premise in our current denomination and frankly, our country's democracy, that every voice has a vote. Now we all know at the time of the Puritans, this didn't really mean every voice. It meant all white free men. Yet it was still a step forward from only those holding land and titles having a say. Likewise, we know even today, there are many voices who do not have a vote in our country that for so long has been held up as a democratic standard for the world. Nonetheless, the legal framework has been set. Every single adult citizen of our country has the right to vote. It's the job of us all to make sure it can happen. Which brings me to Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who died on Friday, just as Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year, was about to begin. For me, Justice Ginsburg was a prophet in the biblical tradition. Like Moses, who was said to have a speech impediment, she was soft-spoken. Like most of the prophets, she wondered if she was up to it. Like Mary, she had children and family to consider. Like Isaiah and Samuel and all the others, she said, here I am. In Jewish tradition, it's said that a person who dies on the Sabbath, which begins Friday evening, and or on Rosh Hashanah, which this year began on Friday evening, is a tzaddik or righteous one. Ruth Bader Ginsburg died as both Shabbat and Rosh Hashanah were about to begin, in Israel had already begun. And she was indeed a tzaddik. Her life was an example of right living for us all. I'm deeply saddened by her death for all the reasons you'd suspect. And I know she did not want to die right now. She was a fighter, an immensely courageous woman, and her deepest desire was to continue speaking out for those who cannot speak. But we don't get to choose the time of our death. It's chosen for us. We're only given the choice what to do now. So what do we do now? Well, as Justice Ginsburg wrote, fight for the things that you care about in a way that will lead others to join you. Of course, in this election season, it's easier said than done. But I believe even in this fractious, politically divisive, pandemically frightening time, it's what we're called to do. Fight for, struggle for, really work hard on the things we care about, racial justice, climate health, equal rights for everyone, economic justice, accessible and affordable health care for all, etc. Because God calls us to care for all people. And in our country, 
This means making sure our public policies, laws, and regulations uphold the worth and dignity of every single human being. But then there's that other part of what she said. Simultaneously, and perhaps even more challenging, we're called to fight for this change in a way that leads others to join us, which is so very hard right now. First, we have few good leadership models, and second, we are so divided as a people and country. Yet I truly believe that it is only by coming together that we can achieve the common good. I struggle with this every day, do not get me wrong. With people from past periods of my life, certain family members, people in my current life, it's not easy. But as Justice Ginsburg knew, fighting for and speaking out is only part of the equation. One must also work and speak with. One must engage in dialogue, civil dialogue, with those in opposition. Jesus even said, sigh, we must love our enemies. I don't know how else to say it, friends, except this is it. This is our life right now, the only one we get. This is our country right now. This is the world right now. It's the canvas we've been given on which to paint the story of our lives. We can wish it were different, but it isn't. We can claim these are extenuating circumstances, but in reality, they're simply the circumstances. So the values we hold, the humans we want to be in the world, the ways in which we choose to behave, this is it. We live and behave in these ways now or never. So as we enter this Jewish New Year, begin the season of fall, continue the election season, I urge you, follow the voice of the tzaddik, the righteous one, that perhaps we've been given for such a time as this. Be a prophet and fight for the things that you care about. Be a mensch and do it in a way that will lead others to join you. As the prophet Ruth once said, real change, enduring change, happens one step at a time. Amen. Our sermon hymn is Here I Am, Lord. I have heard 
by the load of snow and rain I have borne my people's pain I have wept for love of them they turn away I will break their hearts of stone give them hearts for love Speak my word to them. Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord, if you lead me. I will hold your people in my heart. I the Lord of wind. I will tend the poor and lame. I will set a feast for them. My hand will say, finest bread I will provide till their hearts be satisfied. I will give my life to them. Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will. John will now lead us in our joys and concerns. Okay. Hi, everyone. I miss you all. Go get your flu shot. <laughs> it is now the time in our service when we share our deep joys and concerns, silently or out loud, with God and with one another. I'll begin with concerns. God, hear our prayers for healing for Dorothy's brother-in-law, Warren, who recently broke multiple ribs and his collarbone. Emily's father, who has COVID. Chris's friend, Greg, who has COVID. Nancy's friend, Laird, and his partner, Susan, as he continues treatment for multiple myeloma. Pat, from surgery and breast cancer, Justin and Ben's cat, Dolly, as she recovers from surgery, and my mom, Marie. God, hear our prayers for Carolyn Osborne and family at the death of her mother, the family and friends of Ruth Bader Ginsburg, Tony and Christine, that they remain safe and healthy amidst the challenges of the pandemic, 
all victims of violence that they and their families be comforted and justice served. Fruitful, safe, and peaceful protests. All those recovering from hurricanes, Isais and Lara. Everyone in our Western states and elsewhere dealing with wildfires. All lands seeking freedom and democracy. Those struggling with mental health issues, stuff, substance use, and or addiction, that they will receive the help and support they need. Everyone impacted by COVID, especially those with related concerns about housing, employment, caregiving, schooling, safety, and health. God, we give thanks for Trisha's daughter, Margaret, who is pregnant with twins. We pray she'll sustain this high-risk pregnancy and she and her baby girls will survive and thrive. Adriana and Layla's new baby cousin, Diane, our congregation's September birthdays. And I have it on good authority that birthday cards have gone out. <laughs> Thank you, Dawn. <laughs> Let's see if I can get back to, here we go. Ellen will now lead us, the other Ellen, wonderful Ellen, will now lead us in the offertory. This is the time in our service when we receive the offering in grateful appreciation for the life and work of this beloved community. During this time physically apart, all of our expenses remain to support the ongoing work of the church. I ask that you please continue to give on our website, via mail, as you are able. The donate link has been put in the chat room if you'd like to give now. If you have any difficulty, please email John Tishy, our assistant treasurer. He is happy to help out and his address, email address is in the chat room as well. I now invite you to take a moment of silence in appreciation for the gift of this church and its many blessings in our lives. Please join in singing the doxology. the service as we began with the canticle of the turning. Since you're now familiar with it, you can sing along more easily or just sit back and enjoy this version's music, images, and words. Thank you. 
So we go forth and I share once again the words of Justice Ginsburg. We do have modern day prophets. Fight for the things you care about in a way that will lead others to join you and keep working for real change, enduring change, one step at a time. Please join me in the sung benediction. before we hear, hear a postlude, um, again from Dorothy and Dan, I invite you all to stay with us um, for a little bit of a coffee hour chat, followed by a coffee hour conversation about Ijeoma Oluo's book, um, So You Want to Talk About Race. I really hope many of you will stay. We're going to show a short video at the beginning um, for those of you who may not have had the opportunity to read the book. And I think it will be a wonderful conversation. Latia Barrett is going to facilitate it for us. <laughs> 